In search of the wild horses of Shackelford Banks. Shackelford Banks, North Carolina, is one of the most ideal settings along the East Coast for wild horses. It is an uninhabited island about nine miles long with no roads or vehicular traffic and no amenities except for two restroom facilities. It is a great domain for horses with good forage in grassy areas and marshes. Fresh water is available at Mullet Pond and water ponds in small depressions after a rain. On all parts of the island, the high water table and sandy terrain makes digging for water commonplace for these adaptable horses. There is even a maritime forest for shelter in bad weather. Just as this environment is quite suitable for the free roaming horses, people may find this island more rugged and challenging than the other locations of East Coast Wild Horses, unless of course they are waiting for you as you disembark from a boat. Shackelford Banks is one of four islands that belong to the Cape Lookout National Seashore. In addition to Shackelford, the park includes South Core Banks, North Core Banks, and Portsmouth Island. This federal park is located in Carteret County, the county famous for its down east coastal towns and villages. Cape Lookout is technically part of the southernmost outer banks along the Atlantic seaboard, but you will often hear these outer banks and bogue banks referred to as the Crystal Coast. It is a very popular vacation area, and over a half million people visit Cape Lookout every year. Shackelford Banks was not always uninhabited. Early records indicate that the first people to live on the banks were Native Americans, the Cori tribe. European explorers and settlers gained a presence throughout the 1600s, but conflicts between the groups erupted into the Tuscarora War between 1711 and 1715. At this time, Shackelford Banks was not a distinct island, but part of the Core Banks. In 1723, John Shackelford purchased this area, and then the area began to develop in relative peace as settlements grew and multiplied. Interestingly, the whaling industry flourished from 1750 to 1900 in this area, and Diamond City became a thriving settlement by 1885. It was named after the diamond pattern of the nearby Cape Lookout Lighthouse. During these many years, free roaming livestock abounded on the banks. Cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and horses. People on the banks lived in harmony with the free roamers because they owned them. It was their custom to fence in gardens, forming boundaries. As with the other areas along the coast, the residents would gather their animals when needed. Pony penning, just like in the other coastal areas, was a regular occurrence and required many people to round them up. Needless to say, there was a great sense of community in this area. They were a remote people who relied heavily upon each other, and free roaming horses were deeply enmeshed in their history. Just like in Ocracoke, children of the banks would ride the little horses and then release them back into the wild. Shackelford became an island in 1933 when a hurricane created Barden Inlet. Its five villages, including Diamond City, had already been abandoned by 1902 because of other mighty hurricanes, especially the San Surico hurricane of 1899. Many horses, as well as other livestock, were still roaming while their owners moved to other areas, including nearby Harker's Island across Back Sound. People continued to use the banks, though, for their fishing endeavors. They were close enough to maintain their ties with their former homeland. In fact, reunions continue to this day, even on Shackelford, uniting families which claim a special heritage. 
Cape Lookout National Seashore did not spring up overnight. Like other national parks, it was a process. In fact, it developed over a 20-year period as land was acquired first by the state of North Carolina and then by the federal government. Congress officially established this park in 1966, but it wasn't fully established until 1986. Structures were removed while some were preserved for historical cultural value. There are remnants of Portsmouth Village to the north and the Cape Lookout Historical Village to the south which are maintained by the park. This national seashore offers many activities for visitors including a tour of the lighthouse, various educational programs, cabins for rent, and primitive camping everywhere including Shackelford Banks. Detailed information is available online and the park offers several informational brochures. In 1960, prior to the establishment of the National Park, the state of North Carolina had mandated that all free roaming livestock be removed from Core Banks and Shackelford to maintain them as effective barrier islands protecting the other coastal areas. It was argued that the animals ate the vegetation which stabilized the sandy soil so owners gathered and claimed their animals. Some were removed to other areas while others were hunted. Local people though pushed back when it came to the removal of the horses on Shackelford Banks. Horses, perhaps because they are not eaten, are often viewed differently than cows, sheep, goats, and pigs. Historically, they have been partners with humans in many ways, and they were partners to the Down Easters. From a historical perspective, the horses were cultural resources. By 1987, the park agreed to maintain horses on Shackelford, and they became cultural resources for all of us. As you seek the wild horses then, they now only roam Shackelford Banks. The Cape Lookout National Seashore has assumed ownership and management of the wild horses, co-managed by the nonprofit Foundation for Shackelford Horses. The local residents who fought for the horses formed this corporation, and federal legislation passed in 1998 mandated the partnership. Their voices were heard all the way to Washington, D.C. These special horses have also gained the attention and interest of the scientific community. Through genetic testing, it has been established that these horses carry a rare genetic marker which ties them to strains of Spanish horses brought to America in colonial times. They have also become a valuable link in the history of our country. The current management plan allows for a herd of 120 to 130, not to drop below 110. As of July 2018, there are 118 horses, 72 females and 46 males, living in 25 harems or bands. Six foals were born in 2018 and 13 foals were born in 2017. The growth of this herd is managed through contraception administered via dart gun. Dr. Sue Stuska is the equine biologist who has managed this herd since 1999 and she makes decisions about who receives the contraceptive. On Shackelford, mares are living longer as they do not experience the rigors of pregnancy every year. She charts each horse monitoring their bloodlines and kinship as well as their health, birth, and morbidity. She maintains close ties with the Foundation for Shackelford Horses, and when the decision is made to remove a horse from the island, that animal becomes the property of the Foundation. They have a farm where the horses are taken to live and to be gentled for adoption. Dr. Stuska's office is located in the Visitor Center on Harker's Island, but she goes over to Shackelford several times a week to check on the horses. She has access to an ATV kept in a shed near the West End, but she walks far more than she rides. 
She conducts an official census yearly, again mostly by walking. Horses tend to stay in their territory, so she has a slight advantage in locating them. She also sponsors six yearly free horse sense and survival guided tours where she leads visitors to find the horses and offers in-depth instruction about them. They are very popular so advanced reservations are required. The Cape Lookout website publishes the schedule along with important information about the expeditions. For serious wild horse enthusiasts, we strongly encourage people to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. Can you go out to find them on your own? Of course! We can offer a few suggestions. Your first challenge is to get out to Shackleford, which is about three miles from the mainland. Most people choose to take the ferry. Actually, there is one authorized ferry service, Island Express Ferry, leaving from two different locations, Beaufort over to the west end of Shackleford and Harkers Island over to the east end of Shackleford. Looking at a map, you can see that Shackleford is an east-west island with the Atlantic Ocean to the south and Back Sound to the north. In the summer months, ferries leave every 30 minutes and reservations are strongly recommended. People who are going to camp can take their gear on board the ferry. Currently, a ticket costs about $17 for an adult. Information is available online. People can take their private boats over to Shackleford. Locals particularly like to anchor at an area called Wade Shore, which was once home to many locals. If you are going to navigate your own boat, be advised that navigating the waters of Back Sound can be very tricky if you are not familiar with the area. There are very shallow areas as well as strong currents. Local mariners can offer advice. We once encountered a kayak on the shore and talked with a couple who had kayaked over from Beaufort. They explained that they are experienced, strong kayakers and had selected a day when it was going to be calm with minimal winds. When I told our ferry captain about them, he shook his head and indicated that this would not be something that he would recommend. Well, after arriving on Shackleford, your next challenge will be to find the horses. Let's consider the West End first arriving from Beaufort, the quaint coastal town where you can dine along Front Street and watch for wild horses over on the Rachel Carson Reserve across Taylor Creek. We have been fortunate in our trips to the West End as horses have been grazing around the Sound Beach every time we have disembarked. One local resident told us that she comes every weekend and every weekend she sees them there. Our captain, however, told me that frequently they are not in this area. Once on shore, you can go straight, walk along horse paths over dunes towards the ocean. On the top of dunes, you can scan the other dunes and flats for horses. Be advised though that horses may be behind a dune not too far from you, but they are blocked from sight. We have been surprised on occasion as we walked amongst the dunes. Another option after disembarking is to go east along the shore. You will see a pier and the ATV shed is located here as well as one of the two restrooms on Shackleford. There is nothing like stepping out of this facility and seeing a group of horses. From the restroom, you can follow the horse paths toward the ocean. This interior land is a good place to spot horses. You will pass the main watering hole, which is another good spot for the horses. You are reminded to keep a good distance, at least 50 feet, if horses are in this area. You would not want to disrupt them from drinking. From here, you can proceed to the beach and walk east, searching for horses along the shores of the Atlantic. Like most people, we love to see a horse on a beach. However, this is not their favorite place to roam since beach shorelines are not grassy. Horses are grazers, foraging at least 16 hours out of a 24-hour period, so horses use the beaches for good strong breezes on buggy days. 
In fact, we have seen horses choose to nap on beaches, resting in comfort. We once decided to walk along the beach just to see if any horses might be out. We encountered a volunteer on an ATV checking on turtle nests. He told us that he had seen one horse out on the beach about four miles further east from us. We returned to the inland horse trails. Your best bet would be to wander the horse paths amongst the dunes. Eventually you will see a maritime forest to your left or north. Stay to the south traversing the dune paths. Good hiking shoes are recommended and long pants come in handy if you wander through thorny shrubs. Be advised that summer heat indices can soar over 100 degrees so take plenty of hydration. Shade is minimal but occasionally you can spot the shadows of a large shrub. Be aware of the signs of heat distress. Drink plenty of fluids, rest in the available shade, and head for water if necessary. We have been horse trekking when 98% of the other visitors were wearing bathing suits and splashing in the water. We can honestly say that the best times for visiting Shackleford are spring and fall. Hiking is the name of the game at Shackleford. If you should arrive at the east end of Shackleford, arriving from Harkers Island, start looking for horses out on the marsh to your right as you approach the drop-off point. Even if you don't see any horses grazing the marsh, you would want to hike to the right along the shore towards the marsh. Follow the shoreline, it will curve inland. The best time to plan a trip to the east end is at low tide because you will encounter a stream that separates the shoreline from the marsh. If there are horses in the marsh, you might be wading through water up to your knees. We caution everyone to only cross where you see evidence of a horse crossing. Marsh mud can be treacherous. We have stepped in black gooey mud up to our knees, barely saving our cameras. In fact, I now carry a plastic bag for my camera in case I misstep again. If horses are out in the marsh, should you attempt to get closer? Again, be wary of marsh mud. If you can see horse tracks on a whitish track, you might be safe. Marsh walking with an experienced guide would be your best option. Also, you might see a distant horse across the marsh. Distances can be quite deceptive. They could be a half mile away. A professional photographer once told me to shoot a long photo without much zoom then crop the photo with a photo editing program because a high resolution photo can render a clear photo when cropped in. If you do not see horses out in the marsh, then you will have to go inland. Continue along the original shoreline until you see some old posts sticking up from the ground. To the left of these posts is a horse trail which leads to the inland areas. The inland terrain is smooth with open areas amongst thick shrubs. We literally go from open area to open area looking for horse trails to lead us on. It actually feels like a maze, but if you look up, the lighthouse is visible and serves as a marker to help you keep your bearings. If you face the lighthouse, the ocean will be on your right and the marsh to your left. We once heard horse neighs from a thicket area, but we could not figure out how to get to them. As we trekked along, we turned around and caught a glimpse of two horses trotting briskly around a shrub thicket. It was so quick and quiet, I felt like they were ghost horses. Since harems of horses usually have a home range, you might see the same horses if you frequent either end of the island. 
we assumed that perhaps the horses on either end would be more acclimated to the presence of people than the horses who live in the middle of the island. However, one of the ferry captains scoffed at this notion. He told me that boaters utilize all nine miles of sound shoreline and the horses see them too. We actually saw a group of boaters in the distance one time who appeared to be petting the horses. We were too far away to tell for sure, but the basics of observing wild horses remains the same everywhere. Stay back at least 50 feet. Never pet a horse. Never feed a horse. If you walk around a dune and find yourself closer than expected, make a hasty retreat. If you cannot retreat, then stand very still as they pass. We have friends who had just disembarked from their boat when a band of horses came out of the trees and started walking towards them. They got back into their boat and watched them pass with amazement. One of the boys told me that they were so close he could have touched them, but he didn't because they are wild. Perhaps my favorite story, though, is from a woman I met briefly on the Sound Shore. She and her family had anchored their boat, and she was taking a photo of a horse calmly passing by. You know, I have been coming here year-round for over 20 years. I live in Moorhead City, but I love coming here. Seeing these horses never gets old. I hope I can come here forever, and I hope the horses live here forever. <laughs>